Hi all, Lee Veras here with another Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be bringing you another video exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, travel, and more. Today I'm going to look at a version blending, where you take multiple different versions of the same image and blend the best portions of each version into a final optimized version. Along the way I'll go through a complete post-process enhancement in Lightroom. Okay. <laughs> Let's begin. All right, so here, here we're in Lightroom, and um, I, you can kind of see I have like three versions of this. Uh, the version on the right, of course, is the unprocessed uh, version. It's it's a it's a blended HDR uh, exposure, like I've shown before. Um, but there's there's basically three different versions here. Let me just select these and we'll go into full screen. So each one is has good features and things that I would like to change. You know, like this is a, certainly a more colorful one uh, and I like the color of the sky, uh, but I think the mountains are a little too blue. This, this one here is uh, maybe the sky is a little too washed out, although I like everything else. And then uh, here's the unprocessed version. Um, so let's let's dive in here. I'm going to go back and uh, we're going to work on that unprocessed version uh, in the develop module here. And I, you know, I'll, I'll talk about my thought process here. I'm looking at this, and clearly uh, the sky is too bright and the foreground is too dark. This is sort of the middle exposure of a three uh, exposure bracket, uh, where I had more detail in the foreground with an overexposed image more detail in the sky with an underexposed image, and they've been combined in HDR here. So that means that the sliders are going to have a much more dramatic effect. So if we reduce the highlights, and you can kind of see now all of a sudden there's a lot more detail in the sky. If we open up the shadows all the way, you can kind of see now we have a lot more detail in the shadows. Now, all of this makes makes everything more saturated when you really open up the shadows this way. So this is perhaps more saturated than it needs to be, but um, I'm, I'm overall I'm not I'm thinking that this is pretty decent. Um, you know we might do a little texture enhancement, maybe just a little clarity. I mean it seems pretty active, pretty busy if we lo look in here. Uh, there's a lot of active, boy, I'm zoomed in a lot. <laughs> Let's go to 100%. So there's a lot of, you know, sort of activity. It's very high frequency, you know, little detail, blades of grass. If I if I use the texture slider, it can kind of, you know, it can kind of get to be too much if I can get this thing to respond. So if we add texture, um, and now you can see it's kind of still processing here. It gets to be a, a, a little bit too active, so I'm going to toggle that texture off. And maybe just a little bit of clarity like that will be good. Let me back out. Um, I can see from the histogram that we're a little bit further away from the white point, and so of course the clouds are looking kind of gray here. So let me, let me pull the whites up a bit. And I apologize, I'm having issues with my computer. So I'm just looking to get those white, that white point to hit the end so that I've got some stuff in the, in the clouds. Okay, so now I just, if we look up here, you can kind of see I have clipped the blue channel. So I've got a little blue highlight there. If I back off the, the whites, you'll take a look. See, now it's, it's sort of grayed out. Uh, I want to get that white slider all the way until I start clipping in at least one channel. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably bright enough. It's, it's sort of elevating the highlights here and putting a lot of contrast in that foreground. Uh, but right now what's bogging me is uh, the, the sky is still too um, pale. And it also looks like the blue sky has a bit of a magenta cast, which could be a color temperature issue. Uh, if I warm up the color temperature, I'll get that sky a little bit more. It also kind of in, seems to increase the exposure a bit. 
So, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and desaturate just a little bit here. It's kind of tricky because I don't want to desaturate the sky too much, but I'm just thinking overall that that green and yellow was just a little too bright. Uh, and now I've, I've avoided it as long as I can. I have to get, get to that sky and kind of try and richen it up a little bit. Um, the foreground has just a tremendous amount of contrast, but the sky is still looking a little washed out. So we'll add a mask. So I'll go to the mask panel, select the sky, and it builds an automatic mask for the sky. I've got to love that stuff. Now, usually what I do here is I'll just go straight to the dehaze slider because that has a usually does what I want it to do in the sky. So I'm going to increase the dehaze and we're going to get a little more richness in that sky. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Right about there. All right. Now, uh, one other thing I want to do here. Um, I'm going to intersect. Let's let's do another mask. I'm going to make, create another select sky because what I want to do is take the saturation out of the clouds. Um, so I've got a new sky mask, but I'm going to intersect that sky mask with a color range mask um, because I've noticed that over here in the clouds um, there's a kind of a little bit of a more of a yellowish tone so let's see now did I make a color range selection I did so now you see it's off the blue sky and it's only kind of in the clouds so I want to desaturate the clouds to get that sort of blue cast off of them because I think the I think the the dehaze increased the saturation in these shadow areas, which is sort of counter to what things look like in reality. Usually the shadows are less saturated, not more saturated. So we're gonna we're gonna take the saturation down maybe a little bit more. Yeah. And and the sky hasn't suffered too much, so that's that's all now looking kind of like how I want it. I might warm up that or maybe green it up. I like the sky to be a little more cyan -y. So oops. And now it's it's affecting the saturation. Hang on just a second. So if I want the sky to be a little more on the cyan, a little less magenta, I'm gonna use the tint here and move it away from magenta. And I think that's probably good right about there. Maybe a little more. Or actually, I, I can't do it with that one. So if the sky seems a little too... Uh, magenta I'm going to go back to that original sky mask here and I'm going to use the tint slider and get it a little more towards green away from magenta and that will make the sky a little more cyan and that's pretty good and because this guy is mostly about this this kind of blue that I have there I'm going to saturate up that blue just a little bit there we go now I'll go back to the other mask, which has the color range in it, and desaturate that a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, um, the only thing that's really bugging me now is that the these mountains back here are just a little too blue. So we're going to make another mask, and because I, there's, there's a, it's not really clear what the subject is. If I say select subject, it may select this water down here, not the whole thing. So I'm going to select the, the sky again. And this time I'm going to invert that selection. I'm going to invert that mask so that now we're going to have uh, the foreground selected. There you go. 
and now um, let's see I'm gonna I'm going to deselect or I'm gonna desaturate this color range so I'm gonna intersect this mask because uh, you know the sky has blue in it so I've selected this this whole foreground area and I'm going to intersect this mask with a color range mask, which is going to target the blue in, in this mountain. So going up here, intersect mask with color range, and we will click right in that blue area of the mountain right there. And now let's wait for the mask to calculate, and it should uh, limit it to, see, there we go. It's just limiting it to... Um, to the, the, the mountain range there. Okay, so that's cool. Let me just desaturate this a little bit. Now, some, what's interesting is saturation, desaturating should not get lighter. And there's a, I, I consider this a bug in Lightroom where it sort of makes the, makes the desaturated areas a little bit lighter. Normally they would stay the same luminance and just lose their color. So I'm going to just reduce the exposure just a little bit, bring that down, and then maybe reduce that saturation a little bit more, just so it doesn't look so bright blue back there. Um, and uh, let's see, let me just turn the eye on and off so you can see what that's doing. And we got the blue back, and now I'm looking in the water here to see <clears throat> if I need to subtract and I think I do. It's it's losing a little color in some of the highlight areas of this water. So I'm going to subtract from this mask with a brush. And uh, we'll just brush in this area just to subtract any of that desaturation, which is might be happening in the, in the blue areas. It's bringing back the color a little bit, right, especially in here and up in there. Okay, now looking at this and thinking, you know, maybe I can put a little more color contrast between the green uh, of the grass and the yellow part of the grass. So um, let's go, let's turn off our mask and we'll go to HSL. And if I make the green a little bluer, All right, just just a little bit. Come on, stay with me here. A little bit bluer and the yellow a little bit more orangey. And now the green just looks so saturated to me, so I'm going to desaturate the green. Yeah, something like that. I mean, hard to know. That's looking pretty good. Um, and all right, I'm pretty happy with this. One last thing, I'm going to put a little uh, kind of edge vignette in here, just, just a subtle vignette, just to kind of bring that edge in just a little. I mean, we should just barely see it. So, you know, maybe, maybe like, you know, minus nine here. So let's turn that eye on and off so you can see what's going on there without and with the end edge vignette just sort of pulls your eye in and from the edges just a little bit. All right, I'm liking the way this looks. Let's now check our versions. So I'm going to go back and uh, now I should have three versions here, three different versions. Uh, let's look at these full screen, just kind of go one to the other. So here's the one that I just did. There's that middle version, which is a little more colorful, toggling back and forth. Yeah. I do like the sky in that, but I don't like, I think the, the mountains are still too blue, although I do like this sort of green area back in here. So you know, I'm looking and checking these to see, are there portions of each version that I like? Um, so this version has the weakest sky, but I, I do kind of like the foreground. 
And I like the way the, the detail in the mountain. Let's take a look at this one. This one, I like the clouds and the sky actually is pretty decent. The foreground's pretty decent. Here's the colorful sky with the colorful mountains. And here, I kind of like this foreground, although this this version doesn't have the edge vignette. Either. So I think we're this is probably still the best overall. But I do like I do like the way the foreground grass kind of looks in this version. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to select all three of these, and I'm going to open them up as layers in Photoshop. And this is how we blend versions together. So I'm going to do Edit, In, and then Open as Layers in Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've got the three versions sort of stacked on top of each other. Um, this, I believe, is uh, the, the final or the third version that I just did. Uh, here's the sort of colorful one, and there's that, that first version, which has got maybe a little more open foreground area. Um, so I'm just looking at these, and I think, I think since I like this top one the best overall, I'm going to start with that on the bottom. So I move this basically to the bottom here. Um, and I gotta make that bottom a, a, a layer, right? So that I can move the position of this to the bottom. Okay. So now this is my, um, the, the version I, I went through just now to finish. Um, this is the first version um, that was a little more open and the sky's not as good. And here's that most, the more colorful version. Um, so let's, let's work on, is there anything from this second version here that I like better than the first version? And it's this mountain, right? And maybe, maybe the stream I like in this version as well. Okay, so we know that we like the mountain and I like, I'm gonna blend in the stream. Yeah. So I don't mind the, the weight of this. Yeah, okay, so let's, and I'm gonna take that layer zero now and we're gonna hide it. So I hold down Option or Alt and click on the new layer mask. I get a black layer mask. And now to blend these, I'm just going to take a nice soft brush, um, you know, something like, like this. And uh, I'm going to blend in the sky. So I'm painting with 100% of white into the black layer mask to reveal um, the part underneath, which seems to have a little better te texture in this mountain. Okay. And then I'm going to also reveal the stream from underneath. I like the brightness of that water. So I'm blending that back in. And it's, you know, it's pretty cool. You don't have to be all that careful with your, uh, with your masking here because it's, you're masking one image on top of the other and they're identical images. They're just slight color variations. So you'll never be able to see the, that, that this has been masked together. Okay, so now we've got this really colorful version, which I kind of like the color of the sky. Um, but I, I really don't, I really don't like anything else. Maybe, maybe a little bit of the color back here. Uh, we can actually change the blend mode of this to color, right? So I'm just going to change the blend mode and just use the color, right? And so the color kind of does a nice thing to the sky. Um, 
but I don't like the color it's adding into the clouds. I do like this color that it's adding in there. Let's see what it's doing elsewhere. I mean, I, I think, you know, maybe of this extra green down in here I like and just the color in that sky. So let's do the same thing. Let's hide it. Hold down the Alt or Option and click on that layer mask. Now we've masked it all off. Now to bring back the areas that we want, I'm going to use the, the white brush here. You can see that the sky is much nicer, more a little more, a little more cyan, slightly more saturated, um, and that's all I want to use from it. Uh, maybe um, I can mask off just a little bit of that cloud so it's not quite so uh, blue looking. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe. I'll add just a little bit in here. There was a little bit of extra color in there. So I'm adding that in. And I wanted to add in a little more in the green here. That's kind of cool. All right, so there you go. That That's like three versions now that look different than either one by itself, but overall I'm sort of trying to take the best of each. Let me save that. I'll save it as a new version. And we'll call this HDR Edit 4. And it's a PSD, so it shouldn't overwrite anything. And we'll save that. I don't know why it's doing that. That's a new version of Photoshop, and I get this error message now. All right, so let's go back uh, into Lightroom, and I might have to synchronize the folder here. Um, let's show, uh, go to the folder in the library, and I'm going to synchronize the folder, see if we pick up that version. Yep. All right, and I think if I just find, uh, I go back to my Scotland, go to the folder again, and let's just show the green. So now this is my final edit version, and these are the others. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at all three and see what uh, what we can see here. So there's my, my final version, which uh, I'm thinking has the best of all three. But let's take a look, you know. This version, less colorful in the sky. That's like too colorful. That's part way. This one actually overall is a pretty good version, but now I, I just added a few little things to make it pop just a little bit more. And it put a little more interest in that mid-ground area back there. I, I like this version. It's it may be it may be too much, like too saturated. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, what I'll do is we can go back to Photoshop. And you know, maybe I'll just put a, a little bit of a I'll put a gray color on top of the layer stack. It's kind of no saturation, zero saturation. And we'll put uh, this in color mode, right? So now you have a black and white. But here's a trick for desaturating overall. And it, it, it's pretty amazing how, you know, there's there's full saturation. And let's just add, bring it up just a little bit. Take off some of that oversaturation. So something like that seems pretty real. I'm using about 18% opacity and we'll save that. And again, uh, go back into <laughs> go back into Lightroom. Check my versions. Yeah. I 
that. I think this were this one's pretty good. Yeah. I think I think so. I think this version is the best one up here. Again, we'll take a look. All right. So that's a, a also something that you you want to be sure and do is check at full screen. We get the rest of the interface out of the way. It's less distracting, and uh, really the. Th I consider that an image is not really done until I've done at least three versions. Uh, and then I, I do them not on the same day so that I have different ideas when I'm approaching it. And sometimes they come out very similar like these did, but there's often little differences that you can blend together to really ideal, optimize uh, or totally enhance your final image. Okay, well, that's it for now. I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas about how you can process the best version of your own image files by blending multiple versions together. If you like this, uh, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.